What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of our pre-com breakdowns for Modern Horizons 3. We've had three great decks so far, and the support has been unbelievable, so thank you so much. This is our fourth and final installment, and this is our graveyard deck. The deck's name is Graveyard Overdrive. Appropriate name, because this is going to be a lot of graveyard type stuff, but I'm going to run it a very specific way, because I think it's very fun to run it this way. You may not agree, but I think it's going to be great. Let's just dive into it. This is going to be another contest, so we're going to have the pre-con available for someone to win. All you have to do, like, subscribe, and then comment on this video with a thoughtful comment of what your maybe additions and subtractions would be for yourself. Uh, so this could be specific to a deck that you want to build. You don't have to have a budget in mind. I'm keeping a budget in mind for how I'm building it. We generally try to keep it around $50 for an upgrade. So not every card that would be good for it makes the cut because of that. So you just get to say, hey, you know what? Budgetless upgrade. This is what I'm going to add, Shane. So I want to hear it. Uh, just be thoughtful with your answer. We read every answer. We've been getting a ton of, of great comments on all the videos. So just thank you so much for all that support. It means the absolute world to us. It really, really does. Uh, let's just dive in. Let's just talk about this deck because I'm excited. and We've got a lot to go through because this is probably the most cuts I've ever made in addition. So this is almost just a complete rehaul this deck because I wanted to run it a very specific way. All right, cool. So the commander is Dissa or Disa the Restless. This is a Jund commander, so it runs with uh, the black, red, green colors. Uh, but for two black, red, green, she is a legendary creature, a human scout, and says whenever a Lord Goyf permanent card is put into your graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, put it into onto the battlefield bonkers and then even more bonkers whenever one or more creature you control deals combat damage to a player create a termagoyf token i'm sure you guys have seen the memes this is so crazy because termagoyf used to be one of the most busted cards in the game of commander and now it's a token it's just the downfall is crazy this card used to be upwards of two three hundred dollars depending on the set it came from the future site foil was even probably more at one point and now it's a token you know sometimes you, what is it? You, you you either are the hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And I think MTG became the villain on this one and downgraded going to a token. Oh, but it's great. I love it. The second commander, the, the non-face commander, is uh, Corum the Undertaker. Completely switching gears. Corum is one black, red, green. A legendary creature, human warrior. And Corum says, uh, Corum the Undertaker gets plus X plus O, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in all graveyards. So almost kind of like Goyf-esque on how they do their X abilities. Uh, and whenever Corum attacks, each player mills a card, which is nice. Because a lot of the lore Goyfs, they want to see cards in every graveyard, not just yours. And then during each of your turns, this is a pretty cool mechanic. You may play a land and cast a spell from among cards in graveyards that were put there from libraries this turn. So... Really cool mechanic that allows you to benefit from everyone's graveyard. And so I think these two are great commanders, but they almost have like just two, like you would want to, they fit obviously both themes, but Corum could really be his his own commander deck where why this, this is also her own commander deck. So I'm keeping him in there because I'm not cutting into the new cards. So the face commander and the secondary commander both obviously stay, but I do think that they could basically take two different routes completely. Without further ado, I want to talk about how I want to build this deck. And that is, I want to take Disa and run that as the commander and just make it a a Lurgoyf, Kindred, Typal, whatever you want to call it deck, where we're just running all the Goyfs. The unfortunate part, and we're going to get into this, is there's not a ton of Lurgoyfs to, to get. Uh, I think in total, even with the new ones that were printed in this set, there's only about 10 that I could add to this deck. And that is very sad because I want more. I want more Goyfs. So if you're listening out there, Wizards, here, I need you to lock it in. Listen to me. Add more goys. Add more goys. Lure goys. All right, cool. So let's just get into the new cards first, and then we'll dive into the 24 cuts and additions that I did. Yeah, you heard me right, 24. But I want to talk about the new cards first because that's why we're here, right? It's exciting. These are new cards. You can take this deck apart. You can cherry pick some of this stuff and use it in your own decks, however you want to do it. So let's just dive in. The first card I think is one of the most anticipated of the list. And that is Final Act. This is the pseudo farewell for black mana. Uh, Final Act says you, get, you pay four and two black. Choose one or more. So this is where it's very much like farewell. Destroy all creatures. Destroy all planeswalkers. Destroy all battles. Exile all graveyards. And then the most unique ability of them all is each opponent loses all counters. This is very strange because 
I don't know, strange. It's pretty unique because there's not a lot of this in bulk that you can do. There's been like some spot type stuff and like maybe certain types of counters, but to do it all in mass is pretty unique. Uh, this matters because there's a lot of decks out there that really want to build up experience counters, rad counters. What's the new one? Energy counters. All three of those can be removed, exiled, or I'm sorry, each opponent loses all counters. So that could really hinder a lot of decks. Just a unique way to kind of counteract, I guess, someone doing a lot of things that are, you know, just getting out of control. And then the destroy all battles is interesting too, because a lot, a lot of battles get run, but maybe that's going to change and this card can, you know, get rid of it all. So overall, I think it's not quite as good as Farewell. I think Farewell is probably one of the most busted, if not the most busted removal card ever, just because of how just finite it is in removing things. It's exiling things, which is even worse than destroying. Uh, but that is Final Act. The next card we have is an another unique card, Bloodbraid Challenger. Just like Bloodbraid Elf, this card has a Cascade, but this one's a little different. It's three, a red and a green, just like Bloodbraid Elf. It has Cascade and Haste, but then it also has an ability called Escape. Uh, escape says you may cast this card from your graveyard for its escape cost, and that is exile three other cards from your graveyard plus three, a red and a green, so the same as its casting cost, and it's a 4-3. So you get some Cascade mechanics. I noticed the pre-built version of this deck had a couple different Cascading abilities. I thought that was unique in, in that design and trying to Cascade, I guess, into some of your pieces, but I took a little bit of that out just because, like I said, I was focusing so much on Goyfs and then Changelings to supplement the lack of totality in Goyfs, Lur Goyfs. After that, we have a Broodmate Tyrant. This is four, a black, red, and green, so Jund. Flying, this is a dragon. Whenever Broodmate Tyrant enters the battlefield, create a 5-5 red dragon creature token with flying. And then it has Encore, which is five, black, red, and green, where you can play it from your graveyard. It gains haste, and then sack it at the end of the turn. So you can, you know, get that ETB effect again to get another 5-5 red dragon. It is also a 5-5 five five itself, so you can swing in, do some damage with the dragon. A unique a unique card for sure, plus it has the graveyard in and out type ability. Moving on from there, we have another one of the Tempt cards. We have this one is called Tempt with Mayhem. This is one and two red. This is a really good card. A tempting offer, you could choose target instant or sorcery spell. Each opponent may copy that spell and may choose new targets for the spell, they the copy they control. And then you copy that spell once, plus an additional time for each opponent who copied this spell this way. You may choose new targets for the copies you control. I, very fun card. I, I love the copying effect on it. Just for an example, if you take like a Swords to Plowshire or a Path to Exile, just something, you know, straight line that gets a lot of play. And you play this card with it, and then, you know, you copy a target, that target instant. And then let's say all you have all three opponents copy it as well. So that means you're going to get a copy of it, plus three more copies of it. And there, you're going to get... I guess six, is that right? Six triggers, each opponent may copy that spell and may choose new targets for the copy. You copy that spell once plus an additional time for each opponent. So once plus an additional time for each opponent. So you would get one and then plus, so, so you would get four basically casts for it and they would all get one unique cast. So just a, a fun card to kind of break down the math and see like what's gonna happen. So they all get a path to exile, but then you're also gonna get four path to exiles to cast. And it just gets bonkers from there because there's gonna be other spells. Just, that's just an example, a low hanging fruit example. So I like that card a lot. I think it's gonna see a lot of play in Commander. Moving from there, we have another Dragon, Gluttonous Hellkite. This is an X cost spell. It's X, X, and then black, red, green. It says when you cast this spell, each player sacrifices X creatures. So it's kind of a pseudo uh, board wipe. Gluttonous Hellkite enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it for each creature sacrificed this way. And then it has flying and trample. So this creature potentially could be an in game type board wipe where it gets massively huge. And then they don't have any blockers because you forced their hand into sacrificing a lot of stuff. And the fact that it has trample with all those counters on it could be big problems for the end game. After that, we have another card called Pyragoyf. This is some of the new Goyfs. So thankfully, like I said, they made some more Lurgoyfs. This is a red one for three and a red. Pyragoyf's power is equal to the number of card types, types among, among cards in all graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one, which is a very standard like Termagoyf type effect. But whenever Pyragoyf or another Lurgoyf creature you control, or enters, enters the battlefield under, under your control, control. That, that creature deals damage equal to its, to its power at any target. target. It's almost it's like a tear of the peace. Peace. goodness <laughs> gracious. Yes, yes so, so that, that dragon, that, so Power Goyf does something very similar to Tear of the Peaks. Tear of the Peaks is whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, control, Tear of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Power Goyf says the same thing, but it's for Lur Goyf specifically. Whenever another one enters the battlefield under your control, that creature deals damage equal to its power at any target. So a Tear of the Peaks 
type of ability on the Power Goyf fits the deck perfectly. Uh, another new Goyf we have is going to be Polygoyf. This is a green Lord Goyf. It says two and a green. It has Trample and Myriad. Myriad is a really cool ability whenever this creature attacks for each opponent other than defending player. You may create a token that's a copy of this creature that's tapped and attacking that player or playing Swarker the Control. Exile the tokens at the end of combat. Really cool effect. Off Polygoyf's power is equal to the number of card types among cards in our graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. So all the new Goyfs have the exact same ability as Termagoyf as far as its its X, you know, what, what its power and toughness is. Next up we have Barogoyf, which is the third and final new Lurgoyf they've added to this deck. This is a black Barogoyf, and this is two, and a swamp, a black mana, a death touch, and lifelink. And then uh, Barogoyf's, Barogoyf's power is equal to the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. This cool effect, though, that it has is whenever it deals damage, combat damage to a player, you may mill that many cards. If you do, you may put a creature card from among them into your hand. Really cool effect for this this deck because we're trying to put Goyfs into the graveyard because our commander is basically saying anytime a Lur Goyf hits the graveyard or from anywhere other than the battlefield, you get to put it into play and in, into the battlefield. It's nasty because you're cheating all these crazy Goyfs in. So just a great deck or a great card for the deck. Moving on from there, we have a Sawhorn Nemesis. This is a new dinosaur, so this could see a lot of play in some dino decks. For three and a red, the Sawhorn Nemesis enters the battlefield. You choose a player, so you get to crap on somebody that you don't like. If a source would deal damage to the chosen player or permanent they control, it deals double that damage instead. So hey, that person you absolutely don't you don't like at all in the pod, say hey, here, everyone go crazy, attack them. Now everything gets double track with it, essentially. After that, we have an infested Thrinex. Thrinex? This is a lizard. It has flash. It is three, a black and a green. Whenever it enters the battlefield, until end of turn, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Create a number of 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens equal to that creature's power. So a pretty unique mechanic with you know, all your goys coming into play. Because some of the power that you could have based upon like graveyard getting filled up pretty quick could be ridiculous. So you could get a huge payoff for 1-1 one, one green saplings with that out. Especially if someone spot removes one. So pretty unique mechanic. From there we have a new goblin, Siege Gang Lieutenant. This is much like uh, Siege Gang Commander. Yeah, but this is Lieutenant. It has Lieutenant ability. For three and a red, this says at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, create two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. Those tokens gain haste until in the turn. And then you can pay two to sacrifice a goblin. Siege gang lieutenant does one damage to any target. I love this card. I'm going to put it in my Perforous deck because I'm a degenerate. And I love to make 1-1 one, one goblins. It's kind of weird that it's in here. It's, it's, a, it's an odd fit. But, you know, like I said, we're not cutting any of the new cards. This is a new card, so it stays. And we're going to hang out with it. I love it, though. This card's going to see a lot of play. From there, we have a very unique Lurgoyf Aurora. This is a Kindred Enchantment, but it says Enchant Land for two and a green. Enchant Land has one and a green. Tap it to create a Termagoyf token, so another way to create Termagoyf token. So you can do it with your commander if you do combat damage with a creature, and then you can do it with this just by tapping the land. So if you can tap and untap the land, I'm sure there's a lot of ways to bust this wide open. A squirrel's Nest, uh, just different type of things. If you have that same land enchanted with it, you can just make infinite Lurgoyfs. Yeah, that's absolutely bonkers. Moving on from there, we have a new Phyrexian, which I thought was very strange. They brought Phyrexians back, but I guess this set is technically happening in the past when the Eldrazi's were first rounds, like a retelling of the story. Someone help me out with the lore. I, I could be wrong on that. But nonetheless, we have Exterminator Magmarch. This is two, a black and a red. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only a single non-land permanent and opponent controls, if another opponent controls one or more non-land permanents that spell could target, Choose one of those target permanents, copy that spell, the copy targets those are chosen permanents. And then you can pay one in a black to regenerate Exterminator Magmarch. That, it's pretty cool because it's like if you're spot removing something and an opponent sh has something else that shares a type with it that can also be targeted and removed, it's also going to remove that as well. So just a unique thing, just different because it's a Phyrexian construct in a deck full of Lurgoyce and stuff, but I like it because it still involves putting stuff in a graveyard in a way that can make your, your Lurgoyce a lot bigger. After that, we have one of the new lands. We have Twisted Landscape. This is from that same five new lands they have where it taps for Colorless, but you can tap to sack it to go fetch for either a basic Swamp, Mountain, or Force card put it onto the battlefield tap and then shuffle and then it has the cycling where it is either black red or green and you discard this card to draw a card so a unique card i like it after that we have 
a cursed marauder this is a zombie warrior for one in a black it says when it enters the battlefield each player sacrifices a non-token creature so just a way to spot removes from it's almost like fleshback marauder but this is a cursed marauder very similar concepts but yeah i like it. it's 2-1 yeah, just you know pretty straightforward it's just going to come in and then each player sacrifices a non-token creature so it's going to fill the graveyards up which your lower voice want to see so those are the new cards 18 new cards to introduce into the game all very viable for different decks i mean you could build leave this deck as is but a lot of these cards i could see being very much broke not broken but very much in use for other types of decks as well but let's move into the cuts and additions and really get into like what i wanted to do for the deck it's pretty straightforward like i said it's just going to be a lot of a lot of Lurgoyce, a lot of Changelings because they count as Lurgoyce, and a lot of ways to basically fill our graveyard and make them trigger with our commanders so we can have the Lurgoyce come into play without paying our mana cost because they're going to hit the graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield. So, our first card is a shout out to the OG Lurgoyf. This is this is Termagoyf. This was used to be, like I said, one of the most you know busty cards in the game. Uh, for one and a green, this is a creature, Lurgoyf. Termagoyf's power is equal to the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. Sits around eight to ten dollars now. Like I said, it used to be so much more expensive, but the reprint machine got it. It power creep may have got it you know just different things but it's still a powerful card a must have in this deck obviously and what we're doing we're going to cut so there's a lot of planeswalkers i don't necessarily disagree with them but i'm cutting them because they're not they're not goyce i decided to cut liliana death's majesty for this card she can manipulate a graveyard but i'm just trying to i'm just trying to put all the goyce in here so like if you're on a goyce move get out of the way because we're coming after that we're going to add a terravor this is another lord goyce this one's from all the way back in odyssey one and two green it has trample which is great because our commander wants us to be able to deal damage so trample is a great effect for this the deck has brawn in it which is a great add because you're putting a lot of stuff in the graveyard anger as well for haste so like there was a lot of like thoughtful ads in this deck this deck list is probably pretty good just straight out of the box but like i said i really wanted to center it around goif so that's why i took a lot of stuff out and just said let's go goif crazy uh, but it has trample and then its power and toughness are each equal to the number of land cards in all graveyards so it's not specifically like the other voice, this is the first wolf we've seen today that it, it has the ability for you know power and toughness, but instead of all card types, it is a land specific boost. After that, we have a Magnum. Oh, I'm sorry, for the cut on that one, we decided to cut Garrick the Apex Predator, another planeswalker that comes in the precon. After that, we have Magnavore, a cool Goyf that has haste. I love it. The artwork on it, I'm just checking it out. It's got multiple mouths. They're, they're just scary creatures. They look, and I'm sure you've seen the, uh, the Terma Goyf artwork from Fallout, the Death Claws. I mean, it's almost a one to one match with how their claws are and stuff, so it's perfect. Uh, but Magnavore has haste, and then its power and toughness are each equal to the number of sorcery cards in all graveyards. So another specific type of card is looking for in graveyards. For Magnavore, we decided to cut Grist the Hunger Tide, the last planeswalker that was in the precon. After that, we have Detrite. Detrite Tavor? Detrite Tavor? This is the most hateful of the Lord Goyce. This is from Tauri Master, I think. Where are you from? You're from... You're from... Planar Chaos. I apologize. This is from Planar Chaos. I always get those set symbols messed up. But it has two and two red to cast this, and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of non-basic land cards in your opponent's graveyard. It's very specific, but this is where it gets very evil, my friends. You can play Suspend, so the Suspend cost is three or red plus X. X can't be zero, so whatever you're paying into X is how many suspension counters it gets. Whenever a time, or a time counter, Whenever a time counter is removed from a Detrit, 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 while it's removed from the game, so while it's being suspended, destroy target non-basic land. We've got some land hate. We got a land hate, Lord Goyf. It matters because you've got other Goyfs that want to see lands in general. Your other Goyfs just care about card types, and then this one cares about non-basics. So there's a rhyme to the reason. It's not just to be salty. It matters. Lurk Goyfs are so few that they have to be a little hateful, and I'm going to add it. Hate me if you want, but land destruction, you know, it happens. <laughs> and it's very sad when it happens. When you're doing it, you're like, eh, just, you know, you're good. Uh, for that, we decided to cut Junji, the Midnight Sky. After that, we are getting into our changelings. This is going to how we're going to supplement it. That's it. That's all the Goyfs I could add. There were one, two, three, four. Four Goyfs I could add. That's it. It's sad, but that's that's the that's the thing. I mean, we have that plus the other ones. We have literally a ten of total true goif. There is a new one. There's a new goif out. It's a mono black one, but it is so expensive. I'll eat my budget. Actually, I couldn't afford it because it's out of my budget. It's like close to eighty dollars. It's the new mono black goif. It seems like it's gonna be pretty busted. Obviously, this is like pre-release prices, so subject to change. 
pretty pretty heavily. I would hope maybe it can become affordable and be slid into this deck without eating into your budget. Um, but I wasn't able to add that one because it just I, with the rules that we set in place, I, obviously no brainer gonna add if you can't add it. Definitely do add it because the more goyfs the merrier. And as if I build this deck, I would take out the changelings in a heartbeat if I had goyfs to replace it with. Trust me, it hurts me a little bit to do the changelings, but. The closest thing I can get to a Goyf is something that is a Goyf through the ability of being a Changeling. But let's get into it. Our Changelings are part, some of the more fun ones. We have Bloodline Pretender for three generic mana. This is a Changeling. And as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. So there's our Goyf here. Whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Bloodline Pretender. This card could get huge based on the fact that we're dropping a ton of Lurgoyfs at a time. After that, we have Karen Wanderer. I'm sorry, for Bloodline Pretender, we're going to cut a Zony Thousand Eyes. After that, we have Karen Wanderer. Uh, this is a very unique Changeling. I like it because we're filling the graveyards too, so it's going to get this ability. Uh, it's four and a black. It has Changelings, so this card is every creature type. But as long as a creature card with flying is in a graveyard, Karen Wanderer has flying. The same is true for Fear, First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Landwalk, Lifelink, Protection, Reach, Trample, Shroud, and Vigilance. So all this stuff you're making people meal or even yourself, all those abilities, this could be a Goyf that has those type of abilities. Again, we're trying to do damage so we can make more Termagoyf type tokens. This card, I think it's just a, a beautiful add and makes a ton of sense to have in the deck. For that card, we are removing Savala, Heart of the Wilds. Just a great card. We can produce a lot of mana, but again, I'm just going Goyf and Changeling Pseudo Goyf. After that, we're going to add Changeling Outcast. This is cool because it's one black. It's a 1-1 one, one Changeling, and it says it can't block or be blocked. So again, it feeds right into our commander's ability about causing damage. Whenever we do it, we get a token, and the more goyfs, the merrier. So just a, an easy add there for that one. We're going to cut Changeling Outcast Archon of Cruelty, which is a great card for like putting things in the graveyard and great reprint too. But again, it's not a lore goyf. So after that, we have Masked Vandal. This is from Kaldheim. This is one in a green Changeling. When Masked Vandal enters the battlefield, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, exile target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. Just a way to kind of spot remove some type stuff because... I went so specific with, you know, making sure that I had a lot of creatures in this deck that I removed some of the standard, not standard, some of the removal type stuff. So this is a good way to like remove something with a creature as well. So that's why I wanted to add it was it's a changeling, so it's on theme. For the Mass Vandal, we decided to cut Zeatora, the Incinerator. Moving on from there, we have another changeling, Realm Walker. Realm Walker is two and a green. This is a changeling. As it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. We're going to say Lurgoyf. You may look at the top card of your library at any time, which is nice because we know what we're going to mill potentially. So if we want to know we want to get in the graveyard, it's an easy way to do that. And then you may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. So if there's something on top that you want to do that's a Lurgoyf or a changeling because technically it's a Lurgoyf too, you get to do that. So just a way to manipulate the top of your library with this card. Plus it's on theme because it's a ch changeling. After that, we have one of the craziest shapeshifters in the game of magic. This thing I've seen get just absolutely massive. And when you can throw trample on it i mean it's just it's just such such a good card we have tarn mauler for two and red and tom Mahler is a changeling as well and it says whenever an opponent casts a spell any spell you may put a plus one plus one counter on tarn mauler this thing gets so big so fast it's crazy especially if you can get it out early game people are just casting spells multiple spells on the turn it's just bigger and bigger and bigger and then you throw trample on it somehow you can swing in for lethal just just off this one card it's great it's a changeling, so it fits, and it just gets massive. For Taller Mahler, we decided to cut Bloodbraid Elf. Like I said, there was some Cascade type stuff, so we cut that out. And for Realm Walker, Realm Walker we decided to cut Yavimaya Elder. And then moving from there, we have another good little changeling, Venomous Changeling. I like this one because it's two and a black. It's a 1-3 has changeling but it has death touch so that's going to be a good you know solution for blocking getting rid of a lot of things and then swinging because people sometimes don't want to you know throw stuff in front of a death toucher because it's going to kill it all they have is you know a giant creature they don't want to waste it because of the death touch ability so that's why it made the cut and to, to what we cut was a burnished heart so we got a little bit of a little got rid of a little bit of ramp Moving on from there, another unique changeling. We have Web Weaver Changeling. I like this one because it's three, two green. It has changeling, but it has reach. We don't have a lot of ways to block flyers with Lurgoifs. Most of them are on the ground. So putting one on the battlefield that could potentially block a flyer since we don't have a ton, I thought was good. We do have the dragons that we're leaving in from the new cards. So there are some flyers, but generally speaking, we're, we're pretty low there. So having a Goyf with the changeling ability was important for blocking flyers. And it also says whenever it enters the battlefield, if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, which there should be with all this mill, you gain five life. So just a couple, a little add a bonus too for some life gain. 
I thought it fit. And for that cut, we're going to cut Sir Conrad the Grim, which is great for graveyard decks. But again, we're just going the, the Goyf route, so we, we made the cut there. After that, we are going to look at a couple of our non-changeling cards that we wanted to add. So let's look at so let's look at some mana rocks and when I say mana rocks, we're like mana dorks and our ramp spells. The first mana dork and the only add specifically for the mana dorks is Skull Prophet. This is a card from Ikoria. It is a black and a green human druid and you can tap it for black or green or excuse me, you can tap it to put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, which is good because we're just trying to put goifs in to the graveyard from anywhere but the battlefield so we can cheat them right into play. Um, great card, just a, an easy add. I've seen it in a ton of other lists, but as far as cutting that, we decided to cut Steve, secure a tribe elder. Had to go, you know, Skull Prophet is coming through. After that, let's talk about some of our ramp spells. I won't spend a ton of time on these. We'll just go through what we added and, and what we cut. Nature's Lore is one of the ramp spells. We wanted to do that because, you know, let's just go search for, search for a specific card like a forest so we can get a triumph with it. We can get a, a shock land, you know, whatever. For Nature's Lore, we cut Chandra's Ignition, which was kind of a burn spell, a little bit of pseudo removal. After that, we have Cultivate. Uh, Cultivate, we removed uh, Canyon Slaw. Slow, which is another land card, but just, you know, you can remove lands when you're throwing in this, especially when you have access to green. There's so many good ramp cards that like you can choose to like cut back on the land count a little bit, in my opinion, especially with these. They almost are like mana rocks. They're just going to ramp you so you don't really need the land so much like you would in a deck that doesn't have access to green. And then the last one we chose to do is Far Seek. Uh, Far Seek is another, another ramp spell and we decided to cut Sheltered Thicket for that card. So that would be our mana dork and three ramp spells. From there, we wanted to look at ways to manipulate our graveyard. So some cards that I thought really made the cut and just made the deck a lot better. First one is gonna be Buried Alive. Buried Alive is just such a good card for any type of deck that wants to manipulate stuff out of the graveyard, play stuff out of the yard. Buried Alive is two and a black, a sorcery. Uh, search your library for up to three creature cards, which is huge in this deck because you can go get three goifs, three changelings because they're goifs. Uh, put them into your graveyard. If your commander's out, that means you're gonna get trigger, trigger, trigger. Essentially for two, two and a black, you're gonna go get three goifs and put them into play immediately. And that's just bonkers. As long as you have your commander out, I do want to emphasize that this, this deck is extremely important to have your commander out for what it wants to do. So keep that in mind when you're building it, that you know you want to make sure your commander is protected. There's not a lot of built-in protection. There's creeves, but you could add boots. You could add, you know, you have access to green. So heroic intervention, there's a lot of good cards now that, that just give like indestructible and stuff like that. So probably something to keep in the back of your mind as well. But Buried Alive, we're taking out uh, the Reaver Cleaver, which is a great uh, equipment and gives you tons of treasures, but just in my opinion, didn't make a ton of sense for the type of deck I was gonna build for this. Another deck that's just great, another deck, another card that's just great for this deck, Life from the Loam. The dredge mechanic is just a bomb in this, but Life from the Loam says, one in a green, return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. A dredge three, if you would draw a card instead, you may put exactly three cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand otherwise draw a card so it's a really cool way to like keep filling your 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 graveyard up with cards and hopefully hitting on goals hopefully hitting on the changelings with your commander out so you can put stuff in and then ultimately you're also filling your graveyard up with other stuff that can make your goals your lower goals a lot bigger so just a great card life of the loan we decided to cut temple of malady this is the temple lands i'm just you can scry i mean i don't know they, they are what they are they're, they're decent they're, they're good for scrying but they're also in my opinion very easily cuttable after that we have another just mvp we have entomb and Tomb is one black for an instant that says search your for a card, put that card in your graveyard and shuffle. So if you just want to basically just go get any Lurgoy for any answer that you know you can get out of the graveyard immediately, just play this card, go get it with your commander out, boom, it's on the, it's on the battlefield. So just a bomb. For Entomb, we said we're going to cut Temple of Abandon. So we're abandoning the temple. After that, we got three land additions that I thought fit the deck, deck perfectly. One, because they can be fetchable, and two, because they tap for our colors, because they're either or. And then three, the most important part is they have an ability called Surveil. So let's take a look at these lands. First one is Underground Mortuary. Uh, this is a land that counts as a swamp and a forest. It enters the battlefield tapped, which is a negative, but it makes it up for this. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you Surveil one. Surveil one, surveil one says, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your graveyard. Just great for a land to do that because it's another way that hopefully we can hit on a goif. 
have our commander out, boom, it's just, it just, just makes too much sense for me not to have these in here. The second land is commercial district, does the exact same thing, but counts as a mountain force, so it taps for red or green, still has a surveil one, surveil one mechanic. And then the last one is the, the Rosh's Theater. This is the Rakdos version. It's a black and or red and Inner Vassfield tap just like the rest, but it has this Surveil 1 ability on it. So those three lands make it in here. What we're going to do to cut those is going to be a Raging Ravine, a Deep Reap Ritual, and a Temple of Malice. So we're cutting those three. Those are two lands and a Deep Reap Ritual was an enchantment that could draw cards. But I just, like I said, just, I mean, in my opinion, what we're trying to do with the Surveil abilities, that was more important than that enchantment that could draw or draw you cards. After that, we've got two instances I wanted to add. I think they made a lot of sense. One was Assassin's Trophy for a black and green. This is an instance that says destroy target permanent and opponent controls. This controller may search the library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Really good card because it's gonna destroy something, put it in the graveyard gonna make your goy spear it's gonna answer just anything because it destroys target permanent so not it's not like restricted by like creature enchantment artifact land anything like that so you can get rid of like a problem that's slowing you down and you can you know benefit from stuff going in the graveyard because it makes your goyce bigger so i thought that was great for assassin's trophy i got rid of another removal card called Batum bit Bituminous Blast. A Bituminous Blast just didn't make the cut in my opinion. I think Assassin's Trophy is a lot stronger. It's come down a lot in price because of the reprint, so now's the time to like throw it in a lot of decks that can run it because it's just one of the best removal pieces in the game. And then the last removal piece, or not removal piece, the instant that I wanted to add was Thrill of Possibility. Uh, there's already a couple, or at least there's one, uh, the draw type cards in this deck. I believe it was Faithless Looting is already in there, so very similar to Faithless Looting, but Thrill of Possibility is one and a red instant. It has an additional cast of Additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card. Cool thing about that is if you choose to discard a Lorgoy for a Changeling, you're gonna, and your commander's out, you're going to be able to put that card on the battlefield anyway. So just like a no-brainer, and then you get to draw two cards. So for two, one in a red, cheat in a creature and draw two cards. I mean that's just too good not to add, right? For that, we decided to cut a Riveter's Charm. But that. That's it. Those are my, my ads and cuts. I know that was a lot to go through. That was 24, like I said, is the most I've ever done in a, in a deck before. So, you know, just like I said, the, the line is pretty easy. It's just there's not enough goyce for it to make sense naturally. So we're going to supplement it with changelings. We're going to hope our commander sticks around for a ton of different, you know, abilities to trigger for, for us cheating them in because it's just such a good, it's such a good ability. Whenever, you know, a permanent is card is put into your graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, put it onto the battlefield. So those are Lurgoyce that really matter with Disa. And then just the fact that whenever one or more creatures you control do a combat damage to a player, create a Terminal Goyf token. That's just so crazy. Those Goyf tokens are going to be nuts. I'm excited for this deck. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you would add, take away, change. Like I said, don't worry about a budget when, when you're commenting. Let me know, like... You've got infinite budget, so like let's let's hear it. Let's see how you would just bust this deck wide open. I'm very excited for it. And then eventually maybe a Corum style deck too, where you can, you know, really manipulate his abilities into like I think that's one of the one of the thing, fun things about John is it has so many so much access to like really fun like graveyard type of stuff. So it's exciting to see these both of these commanders come into play. But again, thank you so much for the support. We've had a lot of fun doing these Modern Horizon three deck techs with the uh, the pre cons. These have been great. I'm excited to play these physically and see how they do so we can come back and say like we were smart with these decisions we were done with these decisions you know goldfish you can only do so much you know, when you're playing solitaire with your commander deck so playing against other people really shows you like you know the strengths and the weaknesses of the deck so but yeah please comment like subscribe all that jazz we'll see you on the other side really appreciate all the feedback all the likes support it's been overwhelming you guys are awesome amazing thank you thank you thank you but again yeah just leave a leave a comment i hope you win this good luck to everybody and we will see you soon bye